there everybody, my name is Boomer Brown and welcome to Return of the Obra Din, which is the latest indie title from Papers, Please creator Lucas Pope. Um, so I suppose, what is this game and why am I so excited to be playing it? Well, to answer the first part, it is essentially a detective murder mystery type game set aboard a ghost ship called the Obra Din. Uh, the ship itself has been missing and drifting in the Atlantic for a number of years, uh, with its entire crew presumed dead. Now, as if by magic, uh, the ship has returned to home waters, hence the title, and we get to take on the role of an insurance inspector working for the East India Shipping Company. And we essentially have to play Sherlock Holmes and attempt to work out exactly what happened to the ship and her crew. Armed only with a trusty notebook, our powers of deduction, and a kind of spooky pocket watch with a skull engraved on it. Uh, now the watch itself uh, is pretty interesting because it allows us to observe the moment of a person's death uh, so that we can figure out who they were and how they died based on the less than complete information that we'll be getting from the various memories. It sounds uh, relatively easy, but this is Lucas Pope we're talking about here, and I have been reliably told that it is a genuinely satisfying and challenging puzzle game, uh, that despite having a pretty nicely disguised tutorial at the beginning, uh, doesn't really do a lot of hand-holding. As to why I'm excited about this game, well, it has spent a long time in development, somewhere in the region of four years, I think. Uh, I first became aware of it uh, about two and a half years ago and covered the GDC demo release on the channel at the time, uh, which was, interestingly enough, one of my first videos. Um, I probably didn't do it justice then, and I'm probably not going to be able to do it justice now. But that demo really blew my mind, and it's something that instantly clicked with me. The graphics are unusual and that has been uh, an entire journey in itself and one that I am not really qualified to talk about but but I highly recommend that you check out the stuff that Lucas has put out there about the development of this game because it is fascinating uh, especially if game development is your thing. Aside from the graphics style itself the visuals are pretty epic. You're put into essentially a static 3D environment that you need to explore in order to identify people. And I have to say that a lot of thought has been put into staging these scenes and there is serious drama when you first get into a memory. Uh, the scoring, uh, which you can probably hear in the background as I'm talking, is absolutely incredible. Uh, there is some great voice acting and an awesome ambient soundscape as well. It, to be honest, it's an entire package and it's so very different to anything that I've played before and an enormous departure from Papers, Please, uh, which is kind of a fantastic and refreshing thing for a developer to do. Uh, I mean, he could have simply made a sequel to Papers, Please and it would have no doubt sold like hotcakes. Um, so it's kind of nice that he didn't. Uh, there is one similarity that I can find between Papers, Please and Obra Dinn, and that is the fact that you will be examining people's faces in detail to try and identify who they are. So yeah, basically, it, this is an awesome game, and I'm incredibly excited to be playing it. Uh, now, there is a danger with watching a Let's Play of a game like this, and I am warning you right now that there are definitely spoilers ahead. Uh, the nature of the game means that you can't really get the full experience watching it. And uh, having played through the first couple of memories in the demo myself, I can say that it genuinely diminished my enjoyment of the about the first half hour or so of gameplay. Um, so it is something that you really need to play for yourself, and you should go and do that right now if this sounds like something that you're even remotely interested in. It is selling for... Um, 16 euro 70 something it's certainly less than 17 euro on steam right now um so i suppose the first couple of minutes of this video will give you a taste of how the game works and looks uh, but i wouldn't watch too far into it if you're going to play it for yourself which is of course one of the weirdest things you will ever hear a youtuber say to you so uh take note um also, between my rendering software and YouTube's video compression, it's probably going to look pretty terrible graphics-wise. 
Also because I have played the demo as I say and I'm not much of an actor and I'm probably not going to be able to feign surprise or enthusiasm uh, for the first sort of half an hour of gameplay uh, mostly because I know what's coming it's probably going to seem like I am going through the motions a little bit and that's essentially because I am uh, so I'm just going to have to play through that and get to the bits uh, where I am going to be playing blind once again uh, which I am really advising you to go and do. Okay, so I suppose with the heavily scripted intro warnings and disclaimers out of the way, uh, we should actually get in and have a look at what has got me so excited. <coughs> Company man woke me up. Said you'd need ferry to the old bread inn. Not many eager for that job. Seems a bit late if you ask. I didn't. <laughs> What's in the box? I don't know. I'll hoist it up in a few minutes. Hey! How? Carefully. And it seems that I got the male voice actor. Uh, I was kind of hoping for the female voice actor. Um, I mean, if the doctor can be female, I mean, why can't I? Um, so, yeah, we have rolled out here to the uh, stricken vessel. Um, and I think it's time that we get ourselves aboard. We've got a lovely hand there. And we're just going to move forward and uh, grip on there with the left click button and climb aboard the deck. And, oh god, it is incredible to be back aboard the deck of this ship. Um, some awesome things are going to transpire here uh, pretty soon. Um, so yeah, the graphics uh, are probably not looking great for you. They are looking uh, really great for me. It's absolutely incredible. It's like um, those uh, old novels where you get that sort of... Um, you know, line drawings, those printed line drawings, um, which look absolutely awesome and really add to it. Uh, so we have got a skeleton here. Uh, so clearly things have been going down aboard this ship and uh, some of the crew are probably dead aboard it somewhere and um, we're gonna have to try and figure out what happened to them. Um, oh. Okay, so obviously the little box that he was supposed to bring up here for us is a little bit too heavy for him to get aboard the ship. Mast is looking a little bit crooked, uh, though it has been at sea for something like three years. So it's going to be interesting to see what happened to that. I think that's a new graphics edition, actually. I don't think that mast was twisted uh, whenever I played through the demo. Uh, in fact, it's actually cracked in half. Okay, so we're going to go back down to our guy and... Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, I didn't realize he'd actually do that. Uh, this game is already entertaining me. Um, okay, so we're gonna go back down and uh, try and deal with this guy and his belly aching. It's too heavy. Take it yourself or open it here. Okay, doke. I guess we're going to uh, open it here and see what is inside. Okay, so we have got a book. This has actually changed since the demo. Um, do we click? Yeah, we click to open it. Um, we had to uh, find the crew manifest ourselves before, but uh, this time we are uh, treated to. Uh, a book that is brought with us. Uh, preface. Uh, I trust that you now find yourself aboard the Obra Dinn. I expected this day to come, and my every intention was to tell the ship's strange tale within the pages of this book. Regrettably, failing health has allowed me to produce only the basic outline that follows. Your presence on the Obra Dinn is critical. I leave the discovery of its fate and the completion of this book in your hands. In the next few pages, will seem be the next few pages rather will seem bewildering at first. Uh, all will make sense in time. Use the pocket watch to determine the identity and fate of everyone aboard. Complete each chapter accurately and return the book by guaranteed post to the French Office of Affairs in Morocco. The bargain chapter will remain unknown to you. I possess the details within, but have elected to keep them private for now. 
Henry Evans. Okay, so that basically outlines what we are doing here. Uh, we are trying to solve what has happened aboard the ship and uh, what happened to all of the crew and uh, any passengers that might have been travelling aboard. Uh, so we hit D to go forward and escape to go back, that's excellent. And so we've got a table of contents which will probably come in useful. Got some maps here as well. Um, Okay, so the little footprints, I think, mark out where we are. So this is the decks, the gun deck, the main deck. Okay. Excellent. And the cargo hold. Very good. So I'm just going to go back from that. I think this is a map of our course. Okay, we can also left click or right click rather to go back so I'm just going to uh, skip through the entire book this is something of a tutorial I suppose to get us to on the cargo deck so that's gonna be I think that's gonna be an interesting place for us to get I see that um, the bow it's gonna be an interesting place to go uh, I remember in the demo we couldn't get down into the uh, lower decks, uh, we were constrained on to, okay, so that's the chapter that will remain unknown to us. Um, yeah, so everything that happened to us was kind of in and around the captain's uh, office, uh, the end outside the captain's quarters, excellent, inside the captain's quarters. Yeah, so I think that's where the majority of the demo took place on the top of the deck and uh, sort of in around the captain's office. Uh, head officer in the command of the ship responsible for directing the other officers and ensuring the success and safety of the ship's voyage. Okay, so that's all well and good. Uh, so it's tab to open and close the book and Q to go to the table of contents. Uh, so we're going to close the book and we're going to pick ourselves up this ominous looking watch with a skull emblazoned on it. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, remember death. Uh, Memento mortem, I think, is what came up uh, in the demo, but that's clearly that's been taken out, I think. Um, so, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything from here. So we're going to climb back board and start testing out our brand new pocket watch and uh, have a look at what's been happening aboard the good ship Obradin. Um, so we're going to make our way over to the skeleton that we found when we came aboard first. And uh, you can see that the pocket watch pops out automatically for us. Gotta say that those hands look absolutely incredible. Uh, I watched a video where he was uh, doing the work on them and making them look a little bit better. Absolutely fascinating stuff. Although I am interested in stuff like that. I love uh, CAD and drawing and things like that. Anyway, let's click and see what happens. Break it down and take more than those shells! You bastards may take exactly what I give you! Ho oh, ho Okay, so uh, these guys are clearly trying to take uh, something from the captain, and uh, he is not too thrilled about it at all. Uh, if we press E, we can zoom in and we can see this guy on the uh, the photograph that's actually part of the book, I should have shown that uh, before jumping into this. Um, so he's clearly shot this guy in the chest. Um, face details are kind of important. And uh, we've got a third guy actually up here. Uh, I think he's going to try and make his way around and uh, get into the captain's quarters that way. Uh, not entirely sure who this guy is yet. Uh, I actually have an idea about who this guy that's been shot is. And I'm assuming that this is the captain since he was calling out to the captain. And he's opened the door. Still in awe at the soundtrack of this. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, definitely something I want to get hands on uh, if it ever does come out. And so automatically our uh, log opens up and we're treated to some more music that's just... Oh, 
is incredible. I love it. I'm sorry, I'm going to be gushing now for the most part of this video. Um, so yes, part one, outside the captain's quarters. Um, so who is this and how did they die? Uh, so we've got a location of events here on the ship. Um, we've also got the portrait here. Um, so we've got this guy that I'm assuming at this stage is the captain. Uh, we've got this unknown person here and this unknown person here. Um, and this guy is also present. Uh, which may, one of those may be the guys that are actually making their way around the top. There's another guy present, isn't there, that we aren't actually seeing. There's three of them attacking the captain. We've, oh yeah, yeah, three versus the captain, yeah. So that's where we get to have a look at their faces and their things like that. So uh, this is actually um, a little bit bit of a transcript rather of the dialogue so a uh, captain open the door kick it in lest we break it down and take more than those shells so I think they're obviously looking for ammunition and uh, he's decided that they will be better off without it uh, so I'm assuming that the captain is the guy that is doing the shooting um, so I still have no idea who the guy that is dead outside the captain's quarters is but I have an idea that he may have been shot uh, uh, with a gun uh, by an unknown attacker. I am thinking at this stage that it is probably Captain Witterall here who has, or Witterall rather, who has uh, shot him. Um, incidentally, we will not know uh, for a little while. We generally, once we have solved sort of three, or at least made a guess about three, uh, people who they are and how they died uh, that's when we will get confirmation about that so it's all a little bit of a guess until then and even after that I think it's still a little bit of a guess so that is as much information as I have about this guy for now so we're gonna go back in we are still in the memory which is something that is new to this uh, version of the game so yeah, that is definitely looks like that is that guy and with a hat on him, I'm assuming that we are fairly safe to assume that that is the captain. Uh, who this is, I have an idea. This guy, I have no clue who he is. Um, we can get a closer look at his face and we can see that he's that guy down there. Um, he's not wearing any officer's clothing, so I'm assuming he's not a pretty high ranking member of the crew. Uh, this guy, his face is uh, completely obscured at this stage, um, though he does appear to be over there uh, in the photograph. So, uh, we're going to make our way out of the memory at this stage uh, by walking through this rather ominous black passage here. And we return to reality, back aboard the deck. Uh, we can replay that memory anytime we want, just by clicking uh, with the watch. But the door has opened and turned rather blurry, so uh, doors and things do open uh, when you are going through the memories, and that is the way that you will end up uh, navigating your way through the ship, at least I'm assuming for uh, the first portion. Uh, quite a lot of carnage in here. Uh, we've got two more dead guys. Uh, one of them may or may not be the captain, uh, so we're going to have... Uh, we might as well do them in order. I'm going to have a look at the body just inside the door here. Uh, so click the watch and engage the epic music. Where are they? Must be in here someplace. <laughs> They're at the bottom of the sea. That's a lie. <laughs> and the captain strikes again. Uh, one hell of a badass. Um, so, yeah, we see that he has um, managed to slice this guy's throat. Uh, so this is this guy down here holding the rifle. Uh, not entirely sure, again, who he is. Uh, I just look at all these effects. This is incredible. I'm probably not as blown away by this as I was the first time I saw it. And as I said, that is the danger uh, of having some previous experience of it. So 
uh, watching through a let's play or having played through the demo uh, it does kind of take away a bit of the uh, wonder uh, that you have for the game so oh, we've got this guy's making his way down we got a decent look at his face that time as well So back to the book once again. Um, so we've got we've got our location of the corpse. Uh, no idea who they are, though I do have a fair idea as to how he died. Uh, so uh, spear torn apart, suicide. No. Uh, is there one for slicing his neck? He wasn't. Um, I suppose knifed is probably the best and uh, again once again it does appear to be the captain that has done it uh, he's on a little bit of a murderer's rampage stamping out a mutiny and uh, yeah so we get a look at that so where are they must be in some place at the bottom of the sea so obviously the captain has gotten rid of uh, something I'm assuming some shells um, possibly something, um, I have no idea what's going on, so I'm just gonna continue on and see where we get to. So yeah, we're back inside the memory where we left off, and now we're getting a better look at this guy, so he's got something of a beard. His face hasn't gotten any clearer in the photograph just yet either. Uh, shaved head and a beard, all of these details I think are going to be pretty important in us figuring out what has been going on in here uh, so just from having played the demo I know that there is nothing really extra to discover in here and so I'm gonna just exit the memory and continue on okay um, so we might as well uh, check out this guy over here as well while we're here <laughs> <laughs> I love how they place you as well. Um, that is an incredible image there. Uh, the captain has been stabbed in the side, but obviously he hasn't gone down yet. Uh, he's uh, gotten our bearded friend here in the head with uh, some kind of a stick uh, and has taken him out. Um, our guy is obviously uh, dying and bleeding out here. We could hear him gurgling in the audio. And uh, another door has opened for us. And oh, surprise, surprise, there's somebody else in here. And um, unfortunately, they seem to be already dead. Uh, let's have a look at who they may be. So they're over there. Um, it does appear that the, as this is happening, they are already dead. And just have a look at those graphics. That is just incredible. You could make some incredible stills of this game. So, okay, we have got yet another body. Uh, again, no idea who this person is, uh, but we do have an idea of how they died. Um, so I'm going to say they were clubbed. And uh, by, uh, well, uh, not an unknown attacker, I'm still assuming that that is the captain. And uh, so he apparently appears in three memories. Okay, so yeah, we do have some tutorials in this. Memories where this person appears can be navigated from here. Uh, this soul appears in three memories. The first memory, blah, blah, blah. You can bookmark all memories where they appear for quicker navigation. That's excellent. Uh, yeah, that's great. And that apparently appears up there at the top of the thing. So yeah, these couple of missions, these first, or couple of missions, this first portion of the game is very much a sort of an introduction. And I think it's going to be less hand-holding and things are going to get a little bit more difficult uh, as we make our way through. Uh, so we get out again and uh, we can still make our way around inside in the memory uh, after making our initial uh, sort of assumptions. Uh, I still have no idea who any of these people are. 
So I might as well get out and see if I can unlock some other information. I want to see who that person in the bed is. And, uh, ah. Okay. And yeah, so the door has opened in game as well. And it's gone all sort of blurry and weird looking. And uh, there is another corpse on the ground here with a gun sitting beside it. Um, this one's probably not going to take much deduction. Uh, we might as well go through it anyway. Abigail, your brother, my friend, I shot him dead. So, yeah, the captain did himself in. Um, that is not really much surprise to me since I played through the demo. Uh, if you are kind of getting the fact, uh, reaction, or the feeling that I might not have been reacting to this in the most positive way, it's because I know exactly what's happened already. Um, I played through the demo and was absolutely mind gobsmacked by this. This was all huge surprise to me and it's, it's a terrible thing that you are watching this video if you're watching it this far. Um, so it's possible that this may be Abigail here, uh, considering that uh, he has called her his love and she is sort of in his quarters. Uh, inside the captain's quarters, who is this? Okay, so uh, I am pretty confident at this stage uh, this person's face is no longer blurred, which means that they can now be identified. Yes, uh, use the book and pocket watch to gather enough information to deduce their identity, revisit memories on the ship using the pocket watch to study relationships, appearances, and activities. I use the book, maps, crew, crew manifest, and artist sketches, page 24, along with individual conversation logs to find clues about names, relationships, appearances, and roles. Okay, uh, there were 60 people aboard the ship when it left England. Determining everyone's identity and fate will not be easy. Decisive information is rare. You will have to make assumptions using partial information. Some identities may only be revealed through the process of elimination. Good luck. Uh, so I am going to assume uh, that this is a Captain Robert Whitrell, and he died uh, by suicide. Uh, using a gun. So Captain Witterall shot himself. Uh, this may or may not be correct. Fates are validated in sets of three. Uh, correctly identifying at least three people and their fates to have the information typist into the book. Okay. Or to typeset it into the book, I think it said. Um, so yeah, with that done, I think... And I'm sorry that this hasn't been, um, that I probably haven't uh, expressed my uh, immense love of this game and that I haven't been as excited as I was. If you're looking to get my first reaction to this game, uh, I would go back and watch the initial video I did on the demo version of this because uh, that was that's where you actually get my raw reaction to this game. Uh, this is kind of something that I have experienced already and I kind of know what's going on. Um, so with that in mind, I think that I am going to take this moment and uh, probably bring the episode to an end. Uh, if you want to go off and buy it for yourself and play through it, uh, I highly recommend that you do. Uh, this Let's Play series will be here waiting for you when you uh, have completed the game, if that's something that you want to do. Or if not, I will of course be uploading uh, some extra episodes of it, uh, possibly this week. Uh, but until then, I am going to take this opportunity to say thank you very much for tuning in. You have been watching Bloomer Brown on YouTube, and I will see you next time.